Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Matthew Rasmussen, and I'm going to describe what an independent variable is. So an independent variable also can be considered to be an IV. Those two terms are exactly synonymous. Well, this is the factor that's being manipulated by the experimenter. And what that means is that is the item that is being changed, altered, adjusted by the experimenter. For example, researchers are interested in fluoride's ability at reducing cavities. Participants are either given toothpaste containing fluoride or no fluoride. And what's the independent variable? Well again, independent variable is the factor that's being manipulated. And the factor that's being manipulated here is whether fluoride was present in the toothpaste. Participants are either given fluoride or no fluoride, and the overarching independent variable is was fluoride present in the toothpaste. Example number two. Joe wants to determine which pair of shoes will allow him to jump the highest. Therefore, he tests a couple different brands. He tests his Nikes, his Reeboks, as well as his Keds. And what is the independent variable here? Well, again, independent variable is the factor that's being manipulated. What is Joe manipulating? He's manipulating the type of shoe that he wore on his feet when he jumped. So it's the type of shoe, the brand of shoe that he wore, either one is completely fine. Again, he wore Nike Reeboks as well as Keds. He could have worn a number of brands. He chose those three, and the overarching manipulation was the type of shoe worn on his feet. Example number three. Please try this one out for yourself. Parents are interested in what type of shirts their children love. They give their children shirts that are made of cotton or polyester. In addition, these shirts have either a crew neck or a v-neck. You determine for yourself what the independent variable is or what the independent variables are. Take a moment, please. Pause it if you need to. So yes, it's a little tricky here. I actually gave you two independent variables in this one experiment. So the two factors that are being manipulated include material as well as the type of collar. So the first independent variable is the material. Parents either gave their children a cotton shirt or a polyester shirt. The second manipulation is the type of collar. This is either the crew neck or the v-neck. Again, two manipulations, two independent variables, and that is completely fine. Actually, many experiments have more than one independent variable. The second experiment that I would like you to try for yourself. Researchers are interested in how people lose weight. The researchers have some participants exercise while others do not. In addition, some participants are put on a diet, whereas others are not. Again, please pause this if you need to, and again, determine the independent variable or the independent variables. Yes, exactly. Just like the last experiment, there were two independent variables. The first independent variable was the amount exercised. Individuals exercised sometime or none of the time. Independent variable number two was that some individuals were placed on a restricted diet, meaning that they were on a diet, versus others were not. So this can be considered the restriction of food. So we have the two independent variables there, the amount exercised, as well as the restriction of the food. Those are the two manipulations. Those are the two independent variables. One very easy way to visualize this is through a punted square. And with a punted square, it's going to show you the different levels of groups that you're going to have, um, the number of groups that you're going to have for this experiment. And so what we do is on the two columns on the right, we're going to put the first independent variable, and that's exercise. And so we put exercise present versus exercise absent. And then on the two most bottom rows, we're going to put the second independent variable, and that's diet, um, calories restricted or restricted diet. Um, however you want to label it. And what we have on the first row is we have diet, and on the second row we're going to have no diet. And then what we do is we just simply fill in the squares, just like in biology. And again, this is going to show you the different groups that exist in an experiment. First group, group one, they received exercise as well as a diet. Group number two, they received exercise but did not diet. Group number three, they did not exercise, but they had the diet. And then group number four, 
they did not exercise, and they did not diet. So this gives you a nice way to visualize this experiment. Again, we have the first independent variable along the top columns, and then we have the second independent variable on the rows to the left. And we have, thus, the four different groups. These are also called four different conditions. I'd like to ask a couple questions really quick here, and these questions contain factors in respect to independent variables. What is the minimum number of independent variables that an experiment could have? And then what is the maximum number of independent variables an experiment could have? Well, the answer to the first question is that all an experiment needs is just one independent variable. As we showed in the first experiment, that experiment had one independent variable, and it was completely fine. For the second question, that actually doesn't have a specific answer. That specific answer is that it's unlimited. There's no set number of independent variables that an experiment could have. Now, if you have two, three, four, what if you get up to 10 or 20? Well, then it's going to really start making the experiment more difficult to understand what's going on. It may also increase the amount of time that you need to run the experiment, as well as the number of participants that you have. But to answer this, you could have any number of independent variables for an experiment. You're not necessarily limited, but you're limited in that you at least need one independent variable. So just to review, an independent variable is the factor that is manipulated by the researcher. So the researcher is actually changing this, adjusting this in some way, and that is what an independent variable is. Now next time, it's going to discuss what a level of an independent variable is. And this is an extremely important topic to be able to further understand what an independent variable is. So please view this series of slides, and that will discuss what a level of an independent variable is. Thank you.